When I was seven years old, I apparently said to my mother that I thought that this world was God's dream and that our purpose in this life was to make the dream as uh, beautiful and pleasant as possible. And now, 55 years later, I find that I have not evolved very much. I still feel the same way, although I express myself in more sophisticated terms, namely that reality is a, a, a single, infinite and indivisible whole which cannot be accurately named or described, but which we might provisionally refer to as consciousness or, or spirit or love. I uh, then forgot this early childhood intuition and it wasn't until my late teens that it was uh, reawakened in me again and I began to explore the nature of reality, um, first of all through the uh, Vedantic and Sufi traditions and later in the tradition of Kashmir Shaivism. About 15 years ago, I started uh, speaking and writing about these matters. And a couple of years ago, um, a, a, a simple thought came to me. Why am I only speaking uh, to and writing for adults? After all, I had this simple intuition as a seven-year-old boy that reality was, was one and infinite and whole and that we are essentially that. So this idea came to me, why not try to express this understanding for children? And shortly after this, I was answering emails at my desk in Oxford and there was a, a pile of un unopened letters next to me. And, and this, the first line uh, well, f first, the title of a poem came to me, I Am Always I, which, which is really, um, if properly understood, it is really the, the essence of all the, uh, the great religious and spiritual traditions. When, in the Old Testament, when Moses asked God to tell him who he was, he simply replied, I am that I am. And this um, fundamental understanding that what we essentially are is just what we essentially are before it has been added to by the content of experience, before it has been qualified by thoughts, feelings, sensations, perceptions, and, and so on. So this this, this phrase came to me, I am always I. So I, um, I just took a, a, a pencil and started writing on the, on the back of, an, of one of the um, envelopes of this pile of unopened letters. And this poem came to me. And it came to me as some poems do. Some poems uh, come to us and they need constant revision. This poem came to me just in one go, without much thought and with almost no revision. Uh, I'm not always happy. I don't always feel free. I'm not always lonely, but I am always me. And this is the first verse of the poem. And, and, and the idea is that all the, of everything that happens to us throughout our lives, the thoughts, the feelings, the the sensations, perceptions, activities, relationships, innumerable experiences, but, but underlying all our experience and indeed pervading all our experience, uh, our essential self or being to which we give the name I uh, uh, remains constant. And this constant uh, presence uh, that we call I before it has been mixed with or qualified by experience is what we essentially are. And this poem really uh, came to me to draw attention to this 
um, ever-present, unqualified I. So I wrote the poem of a, just a, a, a brief, um, a brief afternoon, and sometime later, I didn't think anything of it to begin with, but sometimes later it occurred to me that this would be a perfect children's book. So I put it to um, uh, my my the small team that helped me organize my events and so on, and Rob and Ruthie and I discussed it. And we decided to make it into a children's book, and both Rob and Ruthie have young children, so they are very familiar with all the, the, the children's books and, and the, the writers and illustrators. And so I asked them to try to, to find someone, and after looking at lots of different children's publications, we came up with this illustrator of children's books called uh, Susanna Sele. And we asked her to, to um, illustrate the, the book, um, which is now published as this beautiful hardback book, I Am Always I. And uh, um, Rob and I met, uh, 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 this was during COVID, we met um, on the internet, uh, on, on Zoom, and we drew up a long um, specification for Susanna to work from uh, uh, telling her all about our very particular aesthetic, how we wanted it. And we spoke for a couple of hours about this. And then at the end of the conversation, we, that we both had the same idea at the same time. And it was this, that uh, artists don't like to be told what to do. They like freedom and that enables them to be truly creative. So having spent two hours discussing um, the specification that we should give Susanna, we trashed it all and Rob just wrote to her and said, this is the poem, we love your work, and please illustrate it however you feel appropriate. And she came up with these utterly exquisite um, illustrations um, uh, it, illustrating um, the poem uh, sometimes I'm lazy, but I don't have a lie. I'm not always cheerful, but I am always I. This marvelous illustration of this girl um, feeling very lazy and it's just packed so much uh, sensitivity and character into a simple drawing that perfectly evokes in um, imagery the meaning of the poem. I call it a children's book, but it's it's really a, a children's book uh, for children between the age of about three and 95. It's dedicated to the child in us all. And um, because it's really, a, um, it's really the essence of self-inquiry, this um, investigation into the nature of our essential self. And what I hope is that um, parents will will read this book to their to their children, and it's very short. It takes a couple of minutes to read, and I hope that parents will read the book to their children, and that their children, if they're three, four, five, six, seven years old, they may not rationally understand it, but um, something of the meaning of the poem will um, will go into their minds uh, subliminally without their necessarily understanding the meaning of it. And it will, as poems do, it will work inside them without their even realizing it. And then maybe sometime later in life, in their teens or twenties or, or, or thirties, when they have perhaps become more conscious of their um, interest in the nature of their self, something may happen in their life, a conversation, a video clip, reading a book, and there might, this, it might trigger a memory in them. Ah, I remember. 
When I was five years old, mom or dad used to read this story to me, or this poem to me, um, and they read it so often that, that, that in the end I learnt it off by heart. Uh, once I was two, for a while I was three. I'm not always four, but I am always me. And, and, and it, in this moment, later in their life, they'll suddenly realize what the meaning of this poem was, and that the meaning had sometime, somehow been working in them uh, all these years, and only later came to be formulated or expressed in their, or with their rational mind. Um, of course, I hope that um, parents and friends, while reading this book to their children, will also uh, um, understand its deep meaning and, and be taken again and again to, to, to the I am that I always am, to the I that I always am, that, that, that aspect of ourself that is prior to and independent of the arising of experience. What we are before any thought, feeling, sensation or perception uh, that, that lies, as it were, in the background of our experience, uh, but also pervades the foreground of our experience and, although hidden much of the time, uh, becomes available to us in brief moments such as the gap between two thoughts uh, on the fulfillment of a desire, uh, in the experience of deep sleep, uh, an experience of, of wonder or awe or shock or grief, uh, numerous moments throughout the day when this um, background presence the fact of simply being or being aware uh, becomes available to us in, in the gaps between the constant stream of our thinking, feeling, sensing, perceiving, and so on. And that as we become more and more aware of this presence in the background, it begins to, uh, it's, it, its innate peace and quiet joy begin to impress themselves upon us. So I hope that both children, I hope that this poem and, and the beautiful, Susanna's beautiful illustrations will take people again and again to their true nature and uh, to the peace and quiet joy uh, that are inherent in it.